Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Deal Stats, Market Data Evolved. We are very fortunate to have our presenters with us today. Adam Manson is the Director of Valuation Data at Business Valuation Resources. Adam oversees the various data products offered by BV BVR, including Pratt Stats, Public Stats, the Control Premium Study, and many more. Adam has been with Business Valuation Resources for 14 years. He holds a bachelor's degree in finance from Seattle Pacific University and an MBA from Portland State University with a concentration in finance. Mitchell Cameron is a senior financial analyst at BVR. Mitchell works with BVR's contributor network to collect and analyze closed deal information from business intermediaries, as well as sourcing data from public company M&A activity. He holds a bachelor's degree in finance from Portland State University and is pursuing his master of science in finance from Portland State. O'Day Murray is a financial analyst at BVR. O'Day works on revising income and closed uh, transactions that are sourced from middle markets, as well as researching the Security and Exchange Commissions and other exchanges for publicly, publicly available M&A information. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Finance from Portland State University and is pursuing a Master's of Science in Financial Management from Boston University. With that, I will now turn the program over to our presenter today, Adam. Thank you, Jared, and thank you to everyone who is attending this webinar. This is Adam Manson, and I am here with Mitchell Cameron and O'Day Murray. DealStats is the product of a lot of hard work from a lot of people, but it's also the result of feedback we received from our users over the years. So thanks to everyone who has provided us with feedback and suggestions. We really appreciate it. We are very excited to provide you all with the first look at DealStats, but first we're going to cover some key items. So I guess the big question probably is, you know, what exactly is DealStats? So the data component of DealStats is the combination of our Pratt Stats database and our Public Stats database. So that is the combination of our private company transactions and our public company transactions. Uh, but instead of fitting all the public stats deals into Pratt Stats, uh, we developed a new interface um, so that you have enhanced functionality and additional features that weren't previously available under the legacy search engine. Uh, in addition, we've added several new fields, including the EBITDA margin and SDE margin. And deal stats will be available uh, live for use on July 30th of this month, so just a couple weeks away. This will be live and everybody will be in there and able to use it. And we want to cover some of the benefits of the, the new platform, and we're going to do a, a full demo here in just a minute, but just to kind of go through some of the important new updates that we've added. Um, so all fields are now searchable. So you have the freedom to conduct a search using any kind of fields you like. Uh, there's also various operators you can apply to the different fields when you're doing your searches. So you have a lot more flexibility than we previously were able to offer you. Also, you can do industry searches, um, either by SICK or NAICS, for general industries or sub-industries just by using one click. Uh, previously, if you've used Pratt Stats or Public Stats, you might remember you would have to go through, click on multiple uh, SICK or NAICS codes, and try and determine what codes were you know, used to create the whole industry. So now you can just easily click and search um, for those industries uh, you know, just with one click. Also, the new page is a filter-based system, uh, so there's no forward and back searching. You get your results instantly. Uh, as soon as you specify a piece of criteria, uh, you get your results immediately. So you see how many transactions meet your search criteria uh, as soon as you enter your information. You also have the ability to customize your data view. So you have the freedom to choose which fields you view uh, in your data grid and also which fields you export. Uh, and also another piece of feedback that we would received over the years that we really wanted to add was the ability to save your searches. So if you come in and you're working on a project and you set up, say, various parameters and you get the comparables you want, you can now save those uh, you know, comparable transactions you know, to revisit at a later date. Also, any sort of custom view that you change, uh, the results of the data grid or the display, that's all something you can save as well. So you have the ability to do that now. Um, another benefit of moving to the new technology is that we're able to provide real-time updates. So with deal stats now, um, when you go in, uh, you'll have access to all the transactions that we've received and have approved, uh, that we've documented, all in real time. Uh, before, um, we had a basically a once-a-month update cycle, uh, but now those transactions will be going in as soon as we enter them. So it's you know, easier to get the most current comps. We also expand our summary statistics to include some new fields as well as percentiles. And um, if you used Pratt Stats before, you might remember there was a transaction cap on your searches, or if you tried to conduct a search for more than 3,500 transactions uh, and get to the statistics page, you might remember that there was a message saying that, you know, your search is too large, please pare it down. Uh, now you can actually conduct a search for any number of transactions and see summary results and statistics uh, for as big of a transaction set as you'd like. So that's now available. 
Also, the ability to generate PDFs uh, for your comparable companies is much easier. You can now, with one click, generate PDFs, basically the individual transaction reports for all the companies um, that you wish to either print or, or save to PDF. Before, that was all done in batches of 25. So if you had uh, you know, a group of comparable companies, um, you know, let's say totaled like 100 transactions, that would have been four different files you'd have to download and try and conjoin those PDFs somehow. Now you can do that all with just you know, one click and in one file, so that's a really nice improvement. And also with the new technology, it allows us to offer uh, more consistent uh, future improvements. So over time, we can offer future enhancements and better functionality uh, just because it's easier to do uh, with this new technology that we can now leverage. So that's another big benefit. And you know, how exactly do you access deal stats? So deal stats, you know, like your other BVR products, will just be accessed under My BVR. You'll see it in the list of products that you subscribe to from Business Valuation Resources. You know, so just following that link will take you to the search page. And if you're a subscriber to Pratt Stats or to the Pratt Stats Public Stats combo, you'll immediately be granted access to deal stats. Uh, so any sort of you know, access that you still have to either of those products, it'll just be grandfathered into deal stats. Uh, if you're part of our contributor network and you've been submitting deals to BVR uh, in exchange for access to Pratt Stats, you know, that process won't change at all. You know, your deals will go into deal stats and you'll receive access to deal stats uh, as a result of that. And for any non-subscribers, um, so for any users or you know, appraisers who are purchasing single searches in Pratt Stats or Public Stats, the new option will now be a day pass. And so you know, if you want to go in and pull some com comparable transactions for an assignment you're working on, you'll have a full 24 hours to go into the platform, uh, do your searches, your filtering, your analysis, um, as opposed to just buying you know, just raw data from a general industry. So you get a lot more, a lot more use there. And we're going to keep Pratt Stats and Public Stats online and available uh, through the end of September. Um, just so I know everybody's really busy and, you know, as you know, people transition over and try the new platform, you know, we don't want it to be, you know, as soon as, you know, Deal Stats is live on July 30th, Pratt Stats and Public Stats disappear. That won't be the case. You'll still be able to go in and use those databases for the next several months. And then when you have time and you want to explore Deal Stats more, you have that opportunity. So, you know, it won't be something that happens immediately. Um, so those databases will be around for a couple of months. And also when deal stats goes live at the end of July, we're going to have various support materials that you could reference. Uh, in addition to recording this webinar and the live demo, we're going to have a series of video tutorials. And in those video tutorials, they explain all the different um, components of deal stats and how to use, utilize the different uh, sections of deal stats. And they're, they're, very, uh, they're a very helpful resource. So that'll be available on a page. And we're going to have a new updated FAQ page that answers frequently asked questions. It defines terms used in the database. It provides uh, all the formulas for the calculations that the database makes. There will also be a companion guide, which also contains screenshots and you know, various how-tos you know, with the platform. And I know a big concern is that you know, having potentially you know, different fields or new fields and maybe some new names, you know, if everybody has their templates they're working in, we have a mapping file that will help you map over your fields basically that you're using from Pratt Stats and Public Stats over at Deal Stats, so you can see their location and if there's any new names. Uh, you know, it's, it's fairly similar to Pratt Stats, so if you're using Pratt Stats before, uh, you know, there would be very little to change. So just to let you guys know about that. And we also want to talk a little bit about, you know, where the data from Deal Stats comes from. So, you know, like we talked about, it comes from Pratt Stats and it comes from Public Stats. And when everything is all, you know, kind of conjoined together, you know, two-thirds of it still comes from our contributor network. Uh, and our contributor network is a series of, or it's a group of, you know, business brokers, M&A advisors, and other transaction professionals who submit uh, closed deal information to BVR, which we review and we work on that, work with them on those transactions if we have any questions. Um, and, you know, if you're, you know, in this space and you do this work, you work on transactions and you want to get involved, you know, the link is bvresources.com slash contribute. You know, we encourage you to, to check out that website and, you know, get involved if you can. If you know anybody who would be interested, you know, please send them, please send them that link. Uh, and if you're on the phone and you're part of our contributor network already, we just want to say, hey, a big thank you to you. We really appreciate everything you've done, and you've really done a lot over the years to make, you know, Pratt Stats and now Deal Stats a really great comprehensive source for transactions. And now we're going to jump into a, a brief history of Pratt Stats and BVR, and then after that we will go into our, our live demo. Okay. 
The BVI was founded in 1995 by Dr. Shannon Pratt. I know we're all very familiar with him, obviously one of the major thought leaders in our profession. Uh, he started BVR, you know, a publishing company back, you know, in 1995 because he saw a need for uh, certain resources um, to be available in the profession that, you know, he wished, you know, would be available, you know, back when, you know, he was practicing, you know, prior to BVR. You know, early on, he partnered with the IBBA, which is the International Business Brokers Association, uh, because the, you know, IBBA wanted to start collecting and aggregating uh, member transactions, and Shannon saw this as a good opportunity to collect uh, extensive information on closed business transactions in, you know, a database format. And so Pratt Stats wasn't the first product um, for BVR, but it was the second. So two years after Shannon started BVR, Pratt Stats launched in 1997. It was first available uh, in print and also in disk format. And here's a look at what one of the early copies of you know, the Pratt Stats you know, print uh, reference looked like. It's a spiral brown notebook. It contained information on transactions from the IBBA. And Two years later, PrattStats went online at PrattStats.com. So over here on the right, um, this is the, uh, the logo for PrattStats initially. And then one year later, BB Resources went online, and this was our logo back in 2000. Uh, also in that same year in 2000, uh, PrattStats.com, which housed the, the first PrattStats database, moved over to BBMarketData.com. And this was at the point where PrattStats, um, it moved into a slightly different database. Um, but BB Resources also started carrying other products that we either, uh, you know, resold on behalf of our partners or we partnered with together to you know, provide that data to, to our users, and such as the, the facts that emerged at BVR Control Premium Study. And then after 2000, a couple of milestones in 2001, uh, Pratt Stats hit 3,800 transactions. About four years later, Pratt Stats hit uh, almost 8,000 transactions and also added some data fields, so we got up to 107 data fields at that point. And then also in 2005, there was an ownership transition. Uh, David Foster purchased BVR in October 2005, and he became BVR CEO. And then just a couple months later in December, Lucretia Lyons joined BVR, and she came on as our uh, president. And then around that time, uh, BVR went through a little bit of a rebranding. We rebranded the business valuation update, and here's a look at the cover of our first rebranded issue. Uh, we also went and we rebranded our logo. And so here's our rebranded logo back from 2006, and it's still the logo that we're using today. And then just a couple other milestones. In 2007, Pratt Stats hits 10,000 transactions. 2010, almost 17,000 transactions. And then earlier this year, in 2017, Pratt Stats hit just over 28,000 transactions and had 148 data fields. You know, so we've added some over the years. And that brings us to deal stats, you know, which will go live on July 30th. Uh, it's going to have about 34,000 transactions, a couple additional data fields, we'll have 164. And we're still going through a series of transactions now, so we have maybe another 1,500 in the pipeline that we hope to get into the database here in the next, oh, I want to say another month or so. So, yeah, so we expect to have those soon. And All right, well, great. I'm going to turn it over to O'Day Murray now to begin our, our live demo and do the big reveal. So, O'Day? All right. Thank you, Adam. Uh, definitely a very exciting point uh, today, and uh, I'm happy to introduce the new database to everyone today. So um, without any further ado, let's dive deep in the platform. The first thing everyone will notice is the new design and look of the database. Uh, a quick overview, uh, it's generally split into two sections. Uh, the, bo uh, the bottom section right here, uh, is where the data of our comparable uh, companies will uh, be housed, as well as the analytical tools that we will uh, dive deeper into uh, throughout this session. And the top portion of the database, or the top section of the database, is where we will be applying our filtration criteria, uh, adjusting our display, as well as extracting or downloading our information. Uh, the first tab I'd like to dive in today um, in the top portion of the database is the Quick Search tab. Now, the Quick Search tab houses uh, fields that are commonly used for the filtration process. Um, some of these fields include uh, filtering by SIC codes, uh, sale date, net sales, NAICS codes, just to name a few, um, where every single field has its own special and new functionality that I will be diving into here shortly. 
Uh, first thing that I'd like us to walk through is this uh, an, an, an example of uh, the SICK code uh, filtration process uh, using this field and walking us through the, uh, the SICK code tree and, and uh, showing you the layout and design of this. Um, so w when filtering by a code, uh, we are presented with a, uh, a code tree in this, in this example, the SICK code tree, um, where we're first off, where we're first off um, presented with the two-digit general industry SICK codes, for example. Um, now we have the option to um, choose uh, these general industry SICK codes, or we may um, dive deep and break things down to um, go to a specific SICK code that we'd like to um, utilize for our filtration process. Um, so uh, let's say for this example, I'm looking for eating and drinking places. Now when I uh, break down the, 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 the SICK code tree and I find my code, all I have to do is uh, click the checkbox that's located right next to the code and the database uh, will return to me <coughs> the resulting transactions that have this code. Um, now, uh, I'm not sure if uh, you guys noticed, but here at the very bottom, uh, right here at this number, which I have just highlighted in orange, that's going to be the number of transactions that we have so far. And as I add um, other filtration criteria, which I will do shortly, you will start to notice that this number will start, uh, you know, uh, being filtered uh, even further and further, and, and you'll see how that changes in real time as soon as you apply your filter, which is very nice, uh, which is a very nice functionality to have, uh, rather than as Adam uh, mentioned, uh, the previous functionality of going back and forth every time you apply a search. Um, one thing that I'd like to mention under uh, SICK code trees or code trees is that when you pick a code, a specific code, where in this case um, we picked eating and drinking places, the database will return to us uh, this code as the primary code, um, uh, return to us all the transactions that have this code as a primary code, but we can also elect to um, have the database return to us uh, transactions that have this code as a primary, uh, sorry, as a secondary or tertiary code as well. And uh, we can do so by scrolling up here to the top in the uh, right, uh, right here under search where it says primary and then we have the secondary and tertiary options. If we press secondary and tertiary, the database, as you can see, the number has changed and now it has included, the database has returned to us those extra transactions that included that code as a secondary code as well. Now the second uh, data field that I'd like us to walk through and demonstrate is uh, a currency-based uh, data field. In this situation, or in this example, uh, I will demonstrate net sales. Uh, now, with these types of uh, fields, uh, there is a nice new feature uh, provided, which is um, the distribution graph, as you can see here at the top of the uh, uh, right-hand side of the, of the view. Um, now, with, with currency-based fields, you know, we're given the option of looking for transactions within a certain range. Um, as you can see, there's a min and max uh, section here, and uh, you know, for the purposes of this demonstration, let's say I'm looking for transactions that have net sales anywhere between 100,000 and one million dollars. <throat> now, as soon as I do my inputs, you can see the graph has changed to uh, where where the minimum and the maximum of that graph is. Uh, uh, are the what we had just typed in, and it shows you the distribution of all those transactions that are located within this range that we have just inputted. So, for example, if I scroll up here to the top, um, I see uh, a part of this distribution. There are 1,441 transactions that lie uh, that have net sales between $460,000 to $550,000. This is a very useful tool you know, when you're conducting your search and you're looking for comparables, when you want to see, well, where do the majority of my searches lie um, as far as their net sales figures are concerned? All right. Um, now, moving on to another data type that I'd like to demonstrate is uh, date-based data types. Uh, in this uh, example, sale date. What's nice about sale, uh, what's nice about uh, date-based data types is that you are given the option of picking from either predetermined time frames uh, that we have uh, set up automatically uh, or gi given you the option to uh, pick from. So for example, let's say 
um, you want to look for transactions that are in the last that occurred within the last month, the last year, uh, the last 24 months, uh, and so on. As well as you have the option to look for transactions within a specific time frame of your choosing, so either before or after a certain time frame, or between uh, a specific time frame uh, of your of your choosing. Um, for this example, I'll just demonstrate uh, quickly um, here. I'm looking for uh, transactions that are after January uh, 1st, 2015. And that, as you can see, the number of transactions has, has, you know, ha ha have been filtered. And as we move on, you'll continue to see that number change. And it'll, you know, it's a very nice thing to see your, your results uh, you know, uh, change as you uh, move along and see your progress towards uh, finding a specific set of comparables. Um, now, another thing that I'd like to sh you know, demonstrate, you can either type in um, the, uh, the date, or if you'd like, you can, there's a, a drop down right here by pressing the arrow um, as so, and it will you know, give you a calendar. If you'd like, you can just skim through the calendar and um, you know, simply click on the date that you would like to utilize um, for your um, sale date uh, filtration. Uh, now, the uh, second, or sorry, the, the, the last data type that I'd like to present to you guys today is uh, list-based data types uh, under the Quick Search tab. Um, now, a very common list-based data type is uh, the uh, transaction uh, type where um, appraisers uh, would either choose to look for transactions which were either asset sales or stock sales. And how we can do so is by simply um, clicking on the uh, the arrow right here in the the right of the of the section, and uh, the the list will drop down, and we can pick uh, one of the of the predetermined options. And for this example, I'm going to be looking for asset sales. All right. Now. Um, a couple of things to mention. Let's say you, after you've applied the filters uh, that you're, you know, you're utilizing, and let's say you do not want to utilize a specific filter anymore, um, you have the option to simply delete the filter um, by pressing on the trash can icon uh, located next to the field name. Um, so, for and uh, so, for example, um, I do if I applied, you know, a NAICS code. Uh, in this example, I didn't, but let's say I did. Um, and I don't want to utilize it anymore, all I have to do is, uh, you know, delete it by pressing the trash can icon, as so. And now it has been deleted, um, where anything that was associated with that filter has been redone or um, uh, not applied anymore. Um, and uh, one thing to say, one thing to mention is that this, uh, you know, delete, deleting option, uh, you know, whether for a filter or a specific f function that you're utilizing, um, this is going to be um, shown across the various tabs that we will um, look, uh, that we will uh, further observe. Um, so, you know, you are not um, subject to anything that's specific. You have the option to delete and add. What, you know, whatever filtration criteria you'd like for whatever um, a purpose as we will, you know, walk through and demonstrate here shortly. Um, now, let's say these commonly used fields uh, are not some of the fields that you, you know, th this list does not have uh, something that you're looking for um, specifically. There is another list of uh, commonly used fields that you can access uh, by pressing the Add Search Field uh, button right here at the top. And it will give you, as you click it, it will give you a drop-down menu of other commonly used um, fields that are used for, for filtration to find comparable companies. Hey, Ode, we had a couple questions um, on this section, so maybe we could just answer some of those here really fast. Sure. Uh, one person wanted to know, um, under the NAICS section, mm -hmm. they said that they saw that manufacturing had three category listings, and they were wondering why that was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because the NAICS hierarchy has, um, you know, the two-digit 31 code, the two-digit 32 code, and also the two-digit 33 code. Um, so we just broke them out as separate pieces of the note instead of shoving them all into one. Mm -hmm. um, another person wanted to know if they want to search for both stock and asset sales, how do they do that? So you showed how to search for asset sales. If they didn't want to specify, mm -hmm. what, what could they do? 
Uh, well, if they didn't want to specify, um, you know, whether they want to limit themselves to uh, either an asset or a stock sale, mm -hmm. um, they can simply um, leave the, uh, the 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 filter um, blank, or they can, you know, delete it as I previously demonstrated, just to make sure that it's there's no there's no reason for it to be applied by pressing the trash trash icon uh, located next to the to the transaction type um, search criteria, mm -hmm. and when you press the trash icon, you know, it will automatically give you all the transactions that are both asset and um, uh, asset and stock because you didn't specify anything in particular. Okay, excellent. Another person asked, what does the acquirer type field mean? Um, and that's just like how we had in Pratt Stats that drop down for public buyer or private buyer. And so if you wanted to limit your transactions to just those private buyers, which are those transactions contributed by the BVR contributor network, you know, you just select private buyer. If you were to select public, then those would be those transactions that we've documented from the Security and Exchange Commission website. Um, it still could be either, you know, still could be private targets, but it's just public buyers for those transactions. Mm -hmm. um, another person wanted to know, if I wanted to search for only transactions where the company was in the United States, the mm -hmm. target, yeah. how do I do that? Oh, so that's a very good question. Um, well, the target um, country is not a part of the default list, but we can access it as I showed you uh, before by simply, uh, you know, uh, it is it is an, an, it is another commonly used uh, field to filter by, and we can get to that by pressing on the add search field list, and we can scroll down and look for it as it's right there, target country. I'll click on it, and it will now be added to the list of the fields that I'm using for filtration to the very bottom of the list. And now all I have to do is uh, um, click on it. And in the the right you know the right side of the uh, the view is where we will you know input the type of uh, you know the, our filtration criteria for this field. Uh, what's nice about uh, the target country uh, filtration field under the quick search tab is that it gives you a visual representation via um, uh, geographical maps uh, that tells you you know where you know the transactions are. Uh, sorry, well at least it gives you like a nice uh, overview of where most of them or the the distribution of the transactions are located. Um, but if you want to, let's say, return, uh, you want the database to only return to you transactions that are U.S. companies, uh, all you have to do is click on the United States map uh, right here. And as soon as you click on it, um, it will return to you uh, only the United States-based companies uh, when it's highlighted in orange. Okay, thank you, Ade. And there's been several people asking, um, you know, how they see their accumulated filters or the multiple pieces of criteria that they've entered. Mm -hmm. uh, I just let everybody know we'll, we'll get to that, so that that's going to be coming here shortly. So just to just to let you know. All right. Um, last thing that I uh, would like to talk about under the Quick Search tab is a very nice new feature. Um, it's actually a very powerful feature in my in my opinion, uh, which is the search all text fields search engine right here in the top left portion of the of the tab, and what it essentially is, it is a uh, it allows you uh, to input a specific search uh, term or a specific term, um, and uh, then what the, the database will do, it will return all the transactions that have this term found in any of their text fields. Um, so it's it's very it's very useful in the sense of well let's say you go you you want to use deal stats today and you're looking for uh, anything that has to do with uh, uh, information technology um, all you have to do is you type that you type information technology into the search uh, the search all text fields and it will give you all the transactions within the database that have that term um, found in any of the text fields of, of all of the of all of the transactions. And that's extremely helpful in the situa in, in many situations. One simple situation I'll, I'll uh, give you an example of is let's say um, a company doesn't necessarily have uh, or doesn't necessarily work in information technology as a primary function of the, of the business. Uh, but when you're looking for transactions, you know, when you utilize the search, it will give you all the, compar all the com comparable companies that have some sort of relation um, with information technology. And, uh, you know, it, you, you will tend to find that, okay, well, maybe this company um, worked in this, in, this, in, in this industry, but as a primary function, not as a primary function. Um, so definitely a good example. And also just to, ex to explain that this is, uh, this, if you input a search term, it won't um, simply right now at this point, you know, as we're moving with this demo, it won't just return to me everything that's, you know, um, associated with that search term. In this case, it will be an extra added layer of filtration. So 
so far so far we've we've been uh, searching or we I have searched for companies that are in the uh, um, eating and drinking places that have a sick code of eating and drinking places. Well, let's say I want to limit myself to transactions that or or to comparables that only have to do with pizza. Maybe pizza shops is what I'm looking for. All I have to do is you know use the search all text fields uh, field uh, or search engine and type in pizza. And now as you can see here in the bottom, the number of transactions has dropped to 69 comparables, and that 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 will provide me with all the transactions you know that have any association with the term pizza. Um, now this includes you know having. Uh, you know uh, that search term in either the business description uh, or the expanded business description, and so on. So it's definitely a very useful tool for simply you know going in and quickly identifying all the, all the comparables that have to do with this this specific uh, search term that you're looking for. All right, now that pretty much sums up everything. Um, or majority of the important features in Quick Search. Uh, definitely a lot more to explore. Um, but now we will move on to the Search tab. Um, and essentially, the Search tab is a more detailed version of the Quick Search tab, um, in the sense that other than having a specific uh, commonly used fields in the um, right, uh, sorry, excuse me, the left section of the view, you have a list of groups. And uh, in this example, let's say, um, looking at this group's name, Target Details, at Target Details, um, th this, if I click on it, it will give me a drop-down of all the fields that are associated with the target company details. And uh, you can pick any of, the, uh, of these fields to um, add that extra layer of filtration. Same goes with Acquire Details. If you press on the Acquire Details group, it will give you all the fields that you can filter by that are associated with the, the acquirer company, and so on. Um, for this example, let's say I'm looking for um, you know, uh, you know, companies that have to do with uh, f uh, eating and drinking places that are franchises. So all I have to do here is uh, go to that group and press locate locate uh, the franchise search criteria. Press on that, and it will apply to the right side of my view. And now I can pick whatever option I would like uh, to, to, to the database to return um, concerning this filter. So if franchise, yes, I would like franchise companies to only be returned. Um, now one thing that you guys will notice is that on top of the franchise filter with which we have just applied, there was a previously applied filter which is target type and it was set to private. This is set to private by, as default when you log into the database. And we've done so um, because we've acknowledged that the majority of our users uh, or the users of DealStats will be coming from PrattStats. And we wanted this to be set as default for how to have the database return to you uh, only transactions that are private, just so uh, we make sure that uh, most of the practitioners aren't thrown off uh, by having uh, this um, uh, or having public transactions included in their comparables without them uh, either noticing or seeing that something seems a bit off. Uh, we've uh, elected to set everything uh, or uh, we've elected to set the d database to return uh, private companies by default to everyone. Um, now if you don't want to, of course, if you don't want to be limited to having uh, only private target, uh, target uh, companies uh, uh, to be returned, uh, all you have to do is uh, delete this, this, this uh, default filter by pressing the trash icon and by deleting this, uh, this filter you will have all the trans all publicly and private sorry all public or private target companies uh, returned in your um, uh, comparable search if, you, if you'd like. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, say as well is that uh, how the search tab functions is uh, you know in association with the quick search tab is by utilizing and logic. So anything that you have previously applied in the quick search tab, uh, it will work in conjunction with everything that you have uh, just applied under the search tab. Um, so both these tabs work utilizing and logic, and everything is applied in both of them at the same time. Uh, as far as the search tab is concerned on its own case, everything that you have applied under search tabs, under the search tabs, so like for example target type and franchise, these two filters are being applied utilizing AMD logic. Um, that is the default of the database, but you can also uh, have them work utilizing OR logic. 
and you can change that option by um, pressing, or you can change that by going to the top uh, left portion of this uh, search tab and pressing apply any criteria selected uh, or. And when you do that, it will take these two filters and it will apply them utilizing or logic. Um, now, or logic is very useful in certain situations. A good situation to uh, mention is like, for example, let's say you're looking for target company comparables, um, but you don't want to limit yourself to target companies within the United States. Um, so you can utilize or logic to look for target companies that are, you know, um, are U.S. countries. Uh, sorry, that are uh, U.S. companies uh, or uh, Canadian companies or Mexican companies and so on. So you know, that is the, definitely a good feature with the utilizing when utilizing the or um, and uh, or logic under the search tab. Uh, now, uh, another nice feature uh, that I'd like to uh, talk about under the search tab is that, you know, we've just previously demonstrated how you can go through the groups and uh, look for the um, specific um, fields that you want to filter by. Now, let's say you don't want to go through the list. Uh, lists. Uh, I mean, going through the list is very good. Uh, let's say if you don't know um, all the fields that are associated with the database, it can be very informative. Uh, to give you the, uh, an overview of, every, of all the fields that you can filter by. But let's say you already know what you want to filter by. Uh, so you don't have to limit yourself to going to these groups. Um, and uh, you can get to the filter that you want to by using the search available column search engine. And uh, let's say uh, uh, for this example, I'm going to delete the franchise, uh, the, the franchise filter that I just applied. And uh, now I want to reapply. I now I want to reapply it. So all I have to do is simply um, type in franchise in the search engine here, and it will give me the filter that I am filtering that I would that I would like to filter by. And all I have to do is um, click on it, and it will be applied. All right. Now that sums up the uh, search tab. Now let's say uh, now after we've done our filtration uh, and uh, we have um, the transactions that we're looking for. Uh, let's say we want to adjust our view, and we can adjust our view um, by uh, going to the display tab. And uh, the display tab is generally split into three sections, the columns group uh, section, uh, available data section, and the display data section. Uh, under Everything underneath the display data section contains all the fields that are already being displayed to you in the data grid right here at the bottom. Uh, so as you can see, for example, uh, SICK, NAICS, um, everything is being displayed in the data grid right now, but let's say you want to add or uh, may perhaps delete um, certain things from the data grid. Um, you can uh, add them utilizing two ways. Uh, the first way I'd like to demonstrate is by pressing on one of the groups under the column group section, let's say income statement group. And when you press on that, uh, that group, everything that's associated with the group will be uh, shown under the available data um, section. And let's say I'm looking for EBIT and I want to add that to my display, all I have to do is click on it and drag and drop it uh, to the display data section, and I can put it wherever I'd like uh, within, the, within the grid. Uh, let's say I want to put it at the very end. All I have to do is go to the very end and uh, drag and drop it, and as you can see, it has been quickly applied. Uh, now, the other way that you can go about and add things to, to the display tab uh, or to the display uh, data grid is by simply utilizing the search available columns engine right here at the top left. And it's uh, all you have to do uh, when you want to add that extra field to, the, to, your, uh, to your view is just type in the field that you know that you want to, to add. And let's say, for example, I'm looking for EBITDA, EBITDA margin. As soon as I type that in, it will show up under the available data section. And you know, for me to add that to the view, all I have to do is click, drag and drop it, and put it wherever I'd like in the, uh, the, display, uh, the display grid. It's just been applied right there at the bottom. Um, and that's how we can adjust our display. Um, and let's say after we've adjust our, adjusted our display, excuse me, um, we um, want to, for example, look at our comparables in a certain order. Um, now, sorting our comparables uh, can be done utilizing two ways. Um, the first way that I'd like to demonstrate is by utilizing the uh, sort tab. Uh, right here in the top section of the database. And all I have to do is click on that tab. And how the, how the sort tab works is uh, 
you know, is very familiar to how we have just uh, demonstrated the display tab where it's split into three sections. It has the groups and every, every group has uh, associated, num uh, or associated fields with the group and you can drag and drop and apply it within the sorting selection um, uh, a section of the tab. And let's, just to show you for, uh, for the, this example, by default, the database has set uh, the SIC code as a primary um, sort um, you, uh, you're in ascending order and a secondary sort uh, of sale date using descending order. So this is a very nice tool if you would like to apply multi-level sorting. Um, now, another way we can sort the database is by simply uh, scrolling down to the, to the data grid itself and uh, clicking on uh, the, the, the column header of uh, the column that we like to sort by. So let's say I'd like to sort by sale date. All I have to do is click on the column header of sale date and the first click will sort the, the comparables in um, ascending order and the second click will sort the, 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 the comparables in descending order. Um, now, there's a lot of nice and cool features in the data grid. Um, this is just one thing that I've demonstrated, which is the, sort, the sorting func feature of the data grid. Uh, but it also has a very nice function, uh, which uh, when, when we observe text-based fields, so for example, if we're looking at target business description, which is a text-based field, uh, there are many search engines associated with every text-based field. As you can see right here at the bottom, uh, there's the, the search engine. Uh, at, at the bottom of the header of the of target business description. And it's a very nice and quick, easy way to uh, look for specific transactions that have a specific ser uh, t a search term or a, a term within their target business description. So let's say, for example, I'm looking for um, transactions that have the word um, ICE within their target business description. And the database will return to me all the transactions, you know, that this is an extra added layer of filtration associated, you know, with, uh, with everything we've applied thus far, this is an extra layer of filtration, let's say if you're looking for specifically in target business description, uh, companies that have the word ICE, for example. And also, if, let's say if you already know the specific SIC or NICS code that you're looking for, all you have to do is you know, go to the data grid, go to this mini, the mini search engine, and type in the, the code that you're looking for, and the database will return to you the transactions that have that specific code. All right, now after we've uh, you know, adjusted our display and, uh, or after we've added our filters and adjusted our display, let's make sure we save everything that we've done so far. And uh, to do so, all we have to do is scroll to the top uh, right corner uh, of the database and uh, press on the Save key. And as soon as we press on the Save key, we will save our criteria utilizing Save As. And as soon as you press Save As, the database will prompt you to give a name uh, and assign any notes to your uh, search criteria. Um, the notes uh, field of the of the of the Save uh, function is very useful um, in the case of you know if you're if you're working on several projects and uh, let's say you uh, tend to forget uh, you know or, or or you weren't able to identify the criteria by simply the name and you want to know the details that are associated with the, the search criteria that you save, you can add in as much level of detail you'd like under the notes, the, 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 the notes field. Um, you know, you can, you know, for example, you can say, oh, research for uh, in the retail industry of companies that have uh, sale data of this range and this range, just as a quick example. Uh, but for the purposes of our session, I'm just going to give uh, our, pre our, our, our current criteria the following name, demo search, and I'll give it notes of demo search as well. And after we're satisfied with our, our inputs, all we have to do is press save screen, and the database will inform us right here in the top right that you know your 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 demos our filter has now been saved and uh, we're we're good to go to come back to it at a later time uh, but let's say we don't want to work with it right now and we want to reset everything to default all we have to do is pr simply press on the reset button in the top right corner right next to save and press confirm and this will uh, set everything to default um, as you can see, everything is back to the way it was when we first began this session. Uh, now, when, if we'd like to go back and revisit our previously saved criteria, all we have to do is uh, press on the Recent button, right next to the Save button right here at the top uh, corner of the database. 
And as soon as you press it, it will give you a list of all your previously um, saved search criteria. So for example, uh, research for uh, client X here, um, I, I gave it that name and I gave it the notes of uh, general retail industry uh, research. What's nice about um, the recent function in uh, deal stats is it provides you everything that has to do with uh, your previously saved criteria, you know, from the name to the notes to when it was created and when it was um, last updated as highlighted in orange right here. So far. And uh, now let's say we want to apply um, one of our search criteria or our previously saved search criteria. I'm going to go back to the one that we have just made, demo search. All I have to do is click on it. It will be highlighted in blue and then I will uh, press on the apply button in the right here. So while it is doing that, we have a couple questions that I'll just answer here really quickly. Uh, one is where is the companion guide going to be located? And that will be on the page for deal stats. So that will be available on July 30th when the, the page for deal stats is live. Um, we have another question where somebody asked, um, they, they haven't used press stats or public stats before. Do we provide the names of the companies? Um, so yes, for all the transactions of public companies, uh, we do provide the, the target names as well as the acquirer names. Um, for the transactions of private companies, if we source the data from the SEC, it will be available for all those companies. If the data was sourced from uh, you know, someone who contributed the deal from our contributor network, typically they choose to keep that information confidential. Um, so for those transactions, it would not be available. Uh, somebody asks, you know, what is the source of our public company comparable data? Um, and that's research we do at the Security and Exchange Commission website, so the SEC is the source for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so you, the the when the function, um, you know, when you when you apply the when you press the apply button, everything should be uh, reapplied to the um, to the number of transactions that we had uh, landed on uh, previously. And um, now, after we've uh, reapplied the, the saved uh, criteria, um, all we have to do now is, you know. At this point in time, when we when we have all the the, the, the comparables, um, we would scroll through uh, and uh, make sure uh, which comparables are um, fit um, for the analysis, uh, or we would like to perhaps maybe exclude them from the analysis. And we can do so by um, maneuvering through the data grid. Um, one uh, a couple of things I'd like to show you about the data grid, as far as maneuvering is concerned, uh, right now. We have about 11 pages worth of comparables, and we're on the first page um, currently. And by maneuvering, uh, if we'd like to maneuver and uh, skim through the, the transactions, all we have to do is uh, utilize the arrow keys by pressing uh, left and right, um, as well as, uh, let's say, if we didn't want to look at uh, a specific number of deals at a time, right now we're set to 10 transactions at a time, and maybe we would like to uh, look at more transactions uh, while we skim through uh, these uh, comparables to see what we'd like to include or exclude. Um, we can look at more transactions per page uh, by pressing next to the view right here at the top uh, left corner of the data grid. Right now it's set to 10, and I will set it to 50, for example. All right, and now, the, you know, as you can see, I'm looking, I'm seeing 50 transactions uh, per page. Um, and uh, right here at the top, the number of pages has been narrowed down to three pages. Um, and let's say um, you want to go to a specific page and you don't want to utilize the arrows, you know where you're going. Um, you can um, use the search uh, engine in the middle and you can uh, press the number and you can go to that number if you'd like. Um, now after you have, um, you know, skimmed through the, the, the comparables and you figure out, well, okay, there's this one comparable that I'm not um, so sure, I maybe perhaps I would like to um, dive deeper into. Um, you would want to uh, look at the transaction uh, report. And uh, to get to that transaction report, all you have to do is press on the um, orange icon uh, located in the left uh, of the, uh, the row of the transaction that you're looking on. Uh, let's say, for example, this, sh this sub shop. Um, all I have to do if I want to see the transaction report is uh, press on the orange icon, and it will reveal to me the uh, transaction report. And uh, the transaction report, you know, contains everything that you need from uh, target detail information to transaction information, uh, financials on the target company, um, extra information, uh, whether it may be right here at the bottom, additional transaction information, um, anything from employment agreement, non-compete, leasing information, 
uh, as well as it will have the valuation multiples and all the ratios associated with our target company. Um, now let's say you don't want to look at every single transaction one at a time and you would like to maybe perhaps skim through all the transactions of all the, uh, uh, of the, of the comparables. Uh, you can do so by uh, pressing the orange icon in the top right corner of the data grid. Uh, when I scroll over it, it says batch transaction report. And when you click on it, the database uh, will now generate all of the reports of all the comparables um, where you can scroll down and you can skim through as many tra transaction reports as you need at, at your own leisure. Um, and you also have the option to um, save this into PDF, uh, which is a very nice feature to have. Um, and uh, you know, when you're when you're done with that, and you and you look through all the comparables, let's say you 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 um, decide to um, exclude a certain transaction. So, for example, the sub shop that we were just looking at, maybe we don't want to include this for the trend in in our in our analysis. All we have to do is deselect it from anything that we will be working with by pressing the checkbox right here at the at the left. And as I uncheck it, it will be excluded from uh, all statistical analysis uh, or downloads that we will uh, be demonstrating here shortly. And uh, now I'll kick it off to Mitchell Cameron um, to walk us through the analysis portion of the database. All right. Thank you, Oday. So now that we've gone through and we've taken a look at um, you know, our comparables um, from our search criteria, what we can do is take a look at the analysis tabs, and that's going to start here with the statistics tab. So you'll notice that the statistics tab is very similar to the transaction summary in Pratt um, We did add a couple things, such as the percentiles, and we added a couple new um, statistics over here, such as SE margin and EBITDA margin. Um, one of the coolest features that we've added to this portion is the copy button up here in the top right corner. If you click on this button, you'll notice that it highlights everything. And what it does is it copies everything in a um, table format. So it's very easy to paste this into any type of text editor or spreadsheet software you might be working with. Um, let's see. I'm going to move over to the Insights tab. So the Insights tab is a visual representation uh, of the analysis of your comparables. So here we have the interquartile ranges, and what this is is the it represents the 50 middle percent of your data. So the bottom of this orange line is going to represent the 25th percentile, while the top of the blue line will represent the 75th percentile. And then the median, or the 50th percentile, will be right here in between the two. So you'll notice that we've done this for all six of the valuation multiples. The second one is the scatter plot. The scatter plot, what it's doing is it's plotting both the numerator and denominator of the ratio, and then it's creating a linear regression line and providing us with an R squared value. And again, you'll notice we've done this with all six of the valuation multiples. Moving on to the stacked bar chart. You'll notice that what's happening here is it's taking our ratios and dumping them into specific buckets. These buckets were created as inter, um, quintiles of the overall database. And so this is a good representation of how your um, selected criteria compares to the rest of, or the entire database overall. And again, all six of the valuation multiples. The last one that we've created under this Insights tab is going to be the distribution. And what this is doing is it's creating a bell curve for all of the multiples in, um, created from our data. So the line in the center here is going to represent our mean. And then we have three standard deviations of data on each side of the mean. So the next tab is going to be the Summary tab. The summary tab um, or shows us um, a summary of all the um, comparables that we've searched for. So it says we have 110 transactions in our search, and it shows all our search criteria. And then what it does is it provides us with some summary information, such as the median, harmonic mean, and mean of all our valuation multiples. And then it also provides us with our profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, leverage, and activity ratios with the, their median and mean values. 
And then similar to the statistics tab, there's the copy feature up here in the top right. If you click on that, it will help copy everything in this exact format. So it's very easy to paste it into any type of text editor software that you might be using or any spreadsheet software you might be using. The next tab is going to be the multiples tab. The multiples tab is a um, section where you can apply your um, comparable multiples to your subject company. So as an example, um, you'll see here that for each of the multiples, it provides us the count of the number of multiples you used to create that multiple and then their coefficient of variation. And so as an example, I'll go ahead and I'll just put in some subject company information. All right, so we'll go down to this first portion where it's the weighted multiple application. And we'll choose the median multiple. And then here I'll select some weights for how much I want to weight each of these multiples. So I'm going to give revenue a 2, maybe gross profit a 1, and then seller discretionary earnings, I'll give that one a 3 because I want to weight that one the most. And here it will, down here on the bottom of this portion, it will create a weighted average. And then also provide us with the high and low value so we get a range. So you can do this same thing down here on the contribution portion. And the only difference is now that we are doing selecting percentages. So once our percentage equals 100%, it will provide us with the total value. We'll then move on real quick to the equity portion. And so what this tab is going to do, it's going to help us derive an equity value. <laughs> And you'll notice here at the top, it provides us the weighted average that we had input um, previously on the last multiples tab. And then it allows us a section um, to input our subject company information. And you'll notice that there's two of them. One is for asset sales and one is for stock sales. And this is really dependent on um, which comparables you're looking at, either asset sales or stock sales. Um, after incorporating that information, you'll arrive at a value of equity. And then we've included areas where you can um, incorporate your minority interest if you're valuing just a minority interest. And then you can also incorporate a couple of discounts such as lack of control and lack of marketability. Um, once you have incorporated all this information, it will then provide you a final value. So. Um, once you're done with all that, if you want to download the data, we have three options now for downloading the data. The first option is only displayed fields. And the only displayed field is only going to download what you see here in the data grid columns. So only these fields for your transactions will download. The second, column, or the second option is going to be all available fields. And what this will do, will download all the raw data for each of your transactions, not just these available fields. And then the last option is the Analysis tab. So this won't actually download any of the data for your individual transactions, but what it will download is um, your Analysis tabs, the statistics through equity shown here. And as an example, I'll go ahead and download the Only Displayed Fields option real quick. We'll open this guy up. And so what you can see here at the top that the only columns that were downloaded were the ones that um, were in the data grid here. So that about sums up our web demo of deal stats. I'm going to turn it back over to Adam, and he's going to finish up um, our, our PowerPoint. All right, thank you. Um, so we just want to talk really quickly about uh, a couple enhancements that we're planning to make. It's actually data-based. Um, so one thing that we're currently doing now is we're going through and we're adding historical revenue figures um, for our transactions. We're also going through and adding historical EBITDA and SDE figures for our transactions. And, and our goal here is to provide you with some historical growth rates as well as some historical margins. Also, as we're receiving new transactions um, that come in through our contributor network, we're also asking for the revenue forecast that the, the buyer and seller relied on in the transaction so we can provide you with some estimates uh, for future growth. Uh, we also have gone through and we've been documenting transactions where less than 100% of a company was acquired. 
So we have a, a bit of that documented now. Um, at some point when we have more, we'll make those available as well. So if you want to utilize data from those sources, that will be available to you. Um, and if you've used press stats and public stats before, you probably know that we don't include the value of earnouts in our selling prices. Uh, we're going to start including um, the value for earnouts in unique fields. So if you do choose to add them to the selling price, they'll be available to you. So you'll have that as an option. So um, yeah, here's just a couple of nice things some of our customers have said about us. And sorry, I know we went a little bit over. Um, if we have some time, we can go through some questions. I don't think we're going to be able to get to all of them, but. Yeah, we definitely have some left over time. Let's uh, take about maybe uh, another four or five minutes and, and answer some of those questions that have come in. Okay, great. Um, so one here is somebody says that they use PitchBook uh, for the guideline public company method, and they wanted to know if uh, deal stats and the public company transactions and deal stats um, will basically be a substitute for that method. Um, so with PitchBook, you know, those are operating companies. Um, all the transactions that are in deal stats are actually acquired companies. Um, so it's still going to kind of fall within the merge and acquired method. So it wouldn't really replace pub, uh, PitchBook if that's what you're using. Um, another question asked about the slides. And then yes, these will be available um, from the, uh, the reading page. I believe they will be downloadable. So you can go through and take a look at um, all the slides that we've gone through. If you want to follow the link and see our company history, that will be available. Um, and then I know some people had some audio issues. Um, so sorry about that. Our apologies. This webinar will be recorded and uh, we'll have it made available uh, to you and sent out to everyone. So if you want to watch it, um, there shouldn't be any issues there. Adam, one question that I've seen uh, quite a few times is people are wondering if they, they have a template already set up with the current uh, legacy press stats format, will they still be able to export in that same format via Excel? Yeah, I've been seeing that question come in here too. Um, yeah, so if you do the all available fields export, that's going to be incredibly similar to the current Pratt Stats export. Um, there might be, there's a few additional fields, um, so it won't be identical, but it's going to be very similar. There's, I mean, if you have it based off of field name, that won't change. Uh, maybe just some of the locations might change. Uh, but we do have a mapping file, which you know, we'll have posted, so you'll be able to see what exactly is new so you can make those changes at, at the time. Um, so it, it shouldn't be much of an adjustment, hopefully. So hopefully fairly minimal. Um, we have another, a couple people wanted to know, can they search for just private transactions? Um, I think they mean uh, like private targets. And you can. So you can search by any field in the database. If you want to search for just uh, transactions of private companies, you just change the, the target type to private. And we've actually defaulted to that um, because we know that most of our users will be coming over to deal stats are coming over from Pratt Stats um, as opposed to the Pratt Stats public stats combo product. Um, so by default, you'll only be searching uh, private targets. But if you want to search for public targets, you can either change that drop down to public, um, or you can just remove it completely, uh, hit the trash can icon to delete it, and then you won't be searching for any specific type of targets, whether private or public. It'll just be all targets. Um, so another question that's come in is, uh, with, with saved templates and searches, uh, how many will you be able to save and how long will they be saved for? Oh, that's a good question. So uh, there's no limit as to how many uh, saved screens you can save. Um, so that's, that's not an issue. Um, in terms of how long they're stored, they're not going to be purged. So you know, if something happens and you know, maybe your subscription access lapses, maybe you, know, you don't renew by the time your access expires, you know, when you come back, your saved screens will still be there. Um, so they won't be going away. Um, another question that I did see is somebody asked, are the screens um, something that can be shared amongst their company? So the screens are really, the saved searches and screens are really tied to the user's account. Um, so every account will have their own saved screens. So if you do have a company uh, and we set you up with a portal, um, which would basically allow you to have multi-user access through one account, then that would work um, to have those saved searches and screens uh, accessible through all your company. Uh, but for individuals, it's going to be tied to your company account. We did have a couple questions about what is getting saved when you do do those saved um, screens. So it's saving your search criteria. It's basically saving anything you've done. So if you've gone in there and you've just changed the, say, display layout for the fields and you save it, when you go back and you retrieve that, it will just put the fields in the order you want. Um, if you've gone in and you've specified search criteria and then you save that, 
uh, when you go back and revisit that uh, save search, it's going to bring back those pieces of search criteria. Um, so basically, it's going to be saving what you do. If you do any combination of things, it'll save that as well. Um, somebody asked, if we don't have a SICK or NAICS code listed, does that mean we don't have any transactions involving those codes? That, that is correct. Um, we, it, we only show codes that we have transactions for. Um, uh, somebody asked about the new PPA fields, or I guess just kind of generally about how we display our purchase price allocation information. So we do display dedicated purchase price allocation fields for all the assets acquired, including the intangibles, uh, as well as the liabilities assumed. Um, so if you do, if you modify the fields in your display grid, you can see those. Uh, if you export to Excel, especially if you do the, uh, the raw data export or the all available fields export, you'll get all those fields. And then for all those identifiable and tangible assets that were acquired, we've added the useful lives. Um, so you'll be able to get those as well, either in the export, uh, when viewing the transaction report, or when modifying your uh, data grid. So, sorry, I know we still have a lot of outstanding questions um, that we didn't get to, so our apologies. We went a little longer than we expected. Uh, but we do promise we'll get back to everyone who asked us questions, and we will answer those questions. So. Well, thank you, Adam. And I, on behalf of BVR, I want to thank Adam Manson, Adam Manson, Mitchell Cameron, and O'Day Murray for an excellent presentation. And I want to thank all our listeners for attending.